Hello, I thought it was about time for another sketchbook tour. So I'm going to show you a few pages in this sketchbook. These pages were made back in 2009, as you can see here, when I stayed with my family at Lochside Cottages, um, a lovely little farmsteading just up above Sankar. Sankar is a station village on the railway line from Glasgow down to um, Carlisle is the final stop. So south of Sankar station you have Dumfries, then Annan, then Gretna Green, then across the border into England and to Carlisle. And I spent a week staying at this farm with my family, my mum, my dad, my brother and with Jennifer. 2009, quite a long time ago. And 11th of July was the date that we left. 4th of July was the date we arrived. So um, exactly the period that I'm filming this in. But 11 years ago. Okay, so on this particular holiday, I remember that I was mostly um, doing sketching in pencil and sketching in pen and then adding watercolour in the evenings, sitting outside these farm cottages. And it was the most wonderful place to stay. We had from the cottage and from the garden, we had views right across the valley. I'll show you in some future pages what that view was like. And in the fields behind us, we discovered after a few evenings that there were barn owls hunting every single evening out in those fields and spent hours out there getting quite badly midgy bitten but totally worth it to watch barn owls, a pair of barn owls hunting, hunting over the long grasses, watching them gliding back and forth and then diving down, talons out, diving into the long grasses and usually coming up with nothing, but sometimes coming up with um, a vole or a mouse or something which they'd managed to catch. Right, so you can see that even back then, 11 years ago, I was already writing my bird lists and... Um, I'll just read you what I'd seen. Dozens of swallows, rooks, black-headed gulls, oyster catchers, buzzard, a moorhen and two chicks, many mallards, a pair of Canada geese, swifts, house martins, house sparrows, goldfinches, pied wagtail, pheasant, jackdaw, blackbird, willow warbler, herd not seen, carrion crow, starlings, curlew, collared dove, Greenfinch, barn owl, as I've just discussed, wood pigeon, great spotted woodpecker, dunnock, wren, blue tit, chaffinch, and that list will be continued in a few pages time. Right, so here, this here is um, a little water body where black-headed gulls were nesting each year, apparently they nest around here, and far off in the hillside you can see wind turbines. Here the bird flying past. So I drew this using pen, quite a, in fact, a very fine artist sketching pen, and then added watercolour on afterwards. Sankar, by the way, it sits on the River Nith. It's in Dumfries and Galloway, and it was Lochside's farm that we were staying at, as I've mentioned. We had a few different day trips from there. Um, one day we went to one lock head or one lock head which is um it's got a lead mining or it's got scotland's lead mining museum and there are lots and lots of signs of the old mines which used to be around there fascinating area other wildlife i'd seen already i've watched hares across the field bounding black tips on their ears Butterflies, I saw painted lady, ringlet, green veined white, small heath, common blue, red admiral, and some sort of fritillary. There were really lovely fields which were wildflower meadows, not being cut too much, obviously not using a lot of um, pesticides, and they were just alive with butterflies and bees, I remember, and loads of orchids. So here is uh, another sketch looking across the fields to the hills, clouds coming in, really dark hillside here. Bird list continued. Coot, kingfisher, heron, chiffchaff, dipper, robin, magpie, red-legged partridge, stonechat, wheatear, sedge warbler, goldcrest, 
heard, not seen, as is often the case. Goldcrests have got an extremely high-pitched call, and um, as humans get older, men tend to lose the um, higher ranges of their, the higher frequencies in their hearing. So often older men are no longer able to hear gold crests, very sadly. Luckily, I still can hear them, but every time I do hear them, I think, <laughs> how long will I hear these for? Um, reed bunting, lapwing, a flock of 20 or 30, great tit, lesser red pole, skylarks, and meadow pipits. At least 47 species sighted. And there were these young swallows, which had obviously fledged from the farm buildings, and they would be perching on the wires beside the farm, perching on the um, barbed wire fence wires, and perching on higher up telegraph wires. All these scribbles are just to suggest a big mass of layering on layering on layering of clouds. If you try to imagine this sketch here without any of that watercolour, it would have a very different effect. Quite abstract. But adding in the watercolour without using a big variety of colours, I think, helps to make it more obvious that it is showing clouds. Now, this is Black Loch. And this was the site of a cranog, uh, a house on the island in the middle of the loch in old times. And in 1861, I was reading, a 4.9 metre long log boat was discovered there. And there was a long rounded pole discovered with it, which it's thought was possibly a, a punting pole used for pushing the boat along. And yeah, there, I've written here, a colony of black headed gulls in the middle of the moor. It was quite amazing. There was such noise. And as you would approach the loch, you would... It's pretty small, this loch. You would hear the black-headed gulls making a great commotion. And then you'd get closer and you'd see them circling in the air above above the pond. Above the loch, sorry. And that's where they nested. Here you can see the farm buildings where we were staying. Now, black loch doesn't look very black here. But on this day, it was looking very black. And I suddenly realised why it had its name black lock, loch. Baby swallows recently fledged, recently left their nest, perching on barbed wire fence. I turned this into an acrylic painting some years ago. Um, I was looking for a photo of that painting to show you, but I haven't managed to find it. This is a circular stone circular dry stone wall very beautiful and i am pretty certain that it's an old sheep cleat used for herding sheep into uh that's about all <laughs> that is all i can tell you about that now here's the view from just outside the farm cottage looking down across the valley and up to the hills at the other side and it's so wonderful to live for a few days for a week in a place which has a big view like that because you get to watch it in all different weather types and all different times of day and here you can see a very clear crisp valley here there was mist rolling in and i tried to use i tried to accurately represent the mist which was really properly rolling down over this hill and through the valley but I found it very hard to do that, and eventually what I did was I used white gouache with my watercolour paint, painted on this white gouache paint here, having added in little, little touches of some of the greens and blues of the hillside and the clouds. And I think it has sort of worked. It does look like a slightly thicker... Just hold it up. Ah, uh, it's not focused. Slightly thicker paint. And I even scratched into that slightly thicker gouache using a pencil with these kind of curvy lines here. And I tried to make the rushes or the reeds in the foreground really quite dark to make the foreground stand out and give this feeling of depth. The eye starts here and then winds 
through the valley and up onto the distant hill. A radar post up on top of one of the hills. This is pencil rather than pen. Inquisitive calves. Jennifer sitting on a dragon boulder. And I decided to go back up to the walk up back over to the black loch and do a sketch of how it may have looked when the Cranog was there, smoke coming out the chimney. Not chimney, hole in the roof. This was on another another walk. Uh, this tree here had a magpie nest in it, as you can see. Pencil and watercolour again. And on one of our day, day trips, we went down south a bit to Drumlanrig Castle, which is a really amazing, huge, old uh, 17th century castle uh, with incredible stately home grounds and a big art collection inside. A very interesting place. So I did this here. This is a ruined building in the woods. And this one. And... Here is a figure, as you can see, but I've also written down here, remember, Jennifer peeks out from behind the tree, so I think this must be my dad. And thanks to me having written this, I have been able to spot that there's Jennifer peeking out from behind the tree. I'm sure I would have never remembered that she was there, had I not written that. So do write notes in your sketchbooks. Write the dates, write where you were, because when I'm looking through sketchbooks now for some of these videos, I sometimes find that I just cannot remember <laughs> where certain sketches were made, nor when they were made. I've just spotted here, there is that same radar tower, which you can see back here. Big golf ball on the hillside. It's nice to do a series of works zooming in and in and in in a landscape. So your first painting might be this scene, then the next one might be a close-up of this tree with the radar behind it, larger than here, but still quite small. Then your next one might be like this, closer up of the radar station itself. Then you could do a final painting, which is this huge big golf ball on a little bit of hillside. Golf ball taking up most of the, most of the page. And that could tie in nicely with the other worlds which I was writing about in my most recent blog post, turning real things into fantastical looking or sci-fi looking scenes. Anyway, so that's a little bit about a really great family holiday in Sankar and showing some of my sketches from them, all of my sketches from then. Okay, thanks. Goodbye.